something you can't fix. If you can't fix what's broken, you'll, uh, you'll go instead. It's Jay and Adam. It's previewed. It's previewed. Fix it with Adam and Jay. Peaches, oh, welcome to Fix It, where friends don't let friends fix pop culture alone. I'm Adam. And I'm Jay, and you're our listeners. Hey there, listeners. Ho there, listeners. Hey, listeners, listen. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. There's a, there's a door in front of you that needs a key. Yeah, man. Iron bars block your path. Hey, listen, listen. I had that as my phone ringer or like my Shut, text message. Did sound. you really? I had it for like two days and I was like, nah, nah, I'm you got to go made it two days. <laughs> yeah, it my was God. It was actively very annoying. I thought I was being very clever and I was like, ah, you know what? No, Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. nope. It may like it may fit the it, it may fit the model, but it is not it is not uh, you should make sounds and tones things you enjoy. Yes. <laughs> not things that annoy you. Welcome to Fix It. Hi. Uh, I'm Hello. Jay, that's Adam. Hi. Hey for listeners. Uh, this is our show Fix It. Uh, you may know us uh, from the all the fully completed Triforce oh. of a YouTube channel previewed where we react, review, and riff to all things pop culture, all things mostly nerdy. Sometimes we stream video games. Sometimes we do all sorts of other stuff. Uh, you may know us from there, or you may know us uh, from, uh, you know, uh, being hidden all across the field and you have to put an apple in a bowl for to get us to pop up. Uh, but this is our show, Fix It, where every week Adam and I take a piece of pop culture that maybe missed the mark, maybe didn't quite get there, maybe or just hasn't been, doesn't exist yet. Maybe doesn't exist yet, and we fix it. Uh, but we're actually uh, this week we're not technically fixing anything. Well, we well we're not fixing an, an existing property that's out there. We are fixing the, the fact that it doesn't exist. Well, there was a cartoon back in the eighties. Which is kind of cool, but needs some work. But we are going to basically pitch a, well, not some, not necessarily a live action, but a television version of The Legend of Zelda. Yes, indeed. Uh, the Tears of the Kingdom is coming out this next week, and it is maybe the most anticipated piece of media for Chiboy over here uh, all year. Uh, so, and we're very excited about it. Um, and so we figured, yeah, we would make, let's, let's take it, let's take a crack at Legend of Zelda. Well, Mario, the movie just made a billion dollars. Made a billion dollars. In a couple of weeks. So like, Zelda's gotta be on deck. Metroid, Zelda. Yeah, but here's the thing. There's a lot of other Nintendo properties that like, I think could work. F-Zero? But they don't necessarily, I would, no, dude, I would watch a, if you did, okay. I was, I I'm just... going to finish my thought, but then I'm going to go back to what, what, what the F-Zero situation. Oh, okay. There's a lot of properties in the Nintendo milieu that would be great as movies, but I don't think they would go... They wouldn't... It's not a one-to-one. Like, I don't think Illumination should make a Zelda property. No, 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 no. Not a, at all. Or a no, Metroid no, no, property. No, 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 Not exactly right. Like, and if anything, I think... I don't know how adult your fix today is going to be skewing, but if anything... Like these are franchises that really should probably skew towards adults. Yeah. Now that being said, well, Castlevania the anime did really well on Netflix. It's that that is a sequel true. series. Yes. And that was adult. Yes. That people, was people got dipped hard. Yeah, man. There was a lot of blood fountains, woofa doofa, a lot of crunches, a lot of splorts. But if you made, oh boy, if you made a spoof, not or a spoof ish, of that F one documentary. The Formula One doc. There was a, okay. Oh, there was, um, a, on, was it on Netflix? Uh, yeah. My brother really got into it, and okay. so now he really likes racing. <laughs> okay. But if you made a, a documentary like that, but with F Zero, oh, that's a good way of doing it. And ha- like having yeah. it be a doc and not a actual like race movie, like Speed Race. Yeah, or just be like, oh, it's just like we're uh, making a documentary about a season of F Zero racing. That's great. And like what that looks like, because also like why have we never gotten another F Zero game? Like, straight up. Like, make it the more intense of the racing games that Nintendo makes. Because, like, Mario Kart's great, but it's, you know, it's a little kitty. Yeah. Uh, but F-Zero's. If you, if you did F-Zero as a, like, you can you can customize your car, pro- like, 
to like the nth degree yeah. and like you'd race it. Oh man, that'd be so good. Give him that Falcon. Pong. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite things about, about uh, Smash Bros and including uh, <laughs> Captain Falcon from F Zero is that they just like, <laughs> like, well, he has fire punches. <laughs> sure. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Why? Uh, 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 we need something. We need, he needs something. Sure. Falcon Punch sounds pretty cool. Why not? Falcon Punch. <laughs> Whereas like everyone else's like like move set in that game like makes sense in yes. their game. It's like, well, he drives he drives an F Zero uh spaceship. What else about him? I don't, I don't know. know. Where's the helmet? I don't know. That's all I got. But yeah, so we're gonna be uh today we are making we are writing from whole cloth mm-hmm. a uh a Legend of Zelda property, however, however that manifests in our own fixes. Mm-hmm. I think we're both doing television shows. Maybe, maybe. Neither of us has any idea what the other one is doing. He, every time I br- we brought up this episode, Adam has a glint in his eye, so I'm really excited for his fix, and he's really excited. I, I think. Are you going to go into a fugue state like I did with World of Warcraft? Maybe. 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 And I haven't played the last three or four. Um, recent zelda games what was the last one you played ocarina of time yeah i think so no uh yes or did you play majora's mask i played majora's mask that might be the last one though. i think that might be the last one no I, and wind waker i played wind waker oh okay but then but but it, after that it's it's twilight princess we Skyward played a little Sword and, twilight yeah when we were starting the gaming channel but like i didn't, I we didn't get that far into it i didn't really enjoy that game very yeah. Much. yeah yeah so it was twilight princess skyward sword uh and breath of the wild was there another one in there I think, yeah, Breath of the Wild was after Skyward Sword, yeah. Okay, I haven't played the last three most recent Zelda games. Which is which blows my mind. Um that you have not that you didn't you haven't played Breath of the Wild. Yeah. You can borrow my copy. You need I think you should play it at some point. Okay. W- but when? I know. I guess it's, that's really the I don't know. story. But before we deep dive into the Legend of Zelda, um This is normally the time of the show. When one of us asks each other how we're doing. Yeah. But uh, since uh, we're getting a lot of episodes in the can in order to get ahead of for uh, baby times. A lot. Um, the majority of our conversations would be pretty repetitive because we were recording these um, like a Twice lot. a week. Twice yeah. a week at this point. So we invented <laughs> a new segment that we call... Roll for Convo. Wait, did you forget? I feel like... I, I totally like, forgot. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate it. No, but I like I like the spirit of that. Give me give me another take on that. Roll for convo. Okay, give me another take. Roll for convo. All right, another one. Roll for convo. All right, just give me like like subtle it up a little bit. You know, give me like a good roll for convo. Oh, I like that one. Thanks. I like that. Also, one. you know, Brian made a whole little bumper for this. He thing. He sure did. Roll for Convo! What a good bumper. Good job, bumper. Wasn't that a good bumper? That's a fun bumper. Uh, I, I, like, I like the dice sounds. Yeah. This is the part where uh, Adam or Brian has given us a list of conversations, and we just roll to see which one we're going to talk about. Roll that d20, Jay. I got. I rolled a nat 20. Whoa! Boom. Okay, so let's see. This is, should be the best question. Should be the best question. Of all 20 of this them. This is a critical success question. Let's see what this question is. All right. Okay. Brian I don't... is laughing his ass off when he is editing this. Say three nice things about producer Brian. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So well played. So, so well played, Brian. Good job, dude. Three nice things. All right. Um, I can say I can say three nice things about Brian. Sure. Well, he um, is your number one best friend. He is my number one best friend. Um, Brian is Brian is the most. Uh, uh, Brian is the most consistently thoughtful person that I've ever met, and he is wildly very. Con- he's he's ex- he exudes consideration. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. and he's very considerate, and um, yeah, it's just like, and it's like it's the kind of consideration that I have to like very be very careful to like not take advantage of and not take for granted. Oh, okay, because like he's just 
He's, he's just so nice. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but he's always he's always thinking of other people in a way that I I think is is really really is really great. I don't know you say something nice about Brian. Oh, okay. Uh, I can say something nice about Brian. Uh, Brian and I are the same person. Yes, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, after and this is not a slight at Jay at all, but after years of working with Jay on doing the stuff. And then we're like, let's do a podcast. <laughs> Brian can help us. Brian's doing lots of podcasts. And Brian and I actually started like really actually talking about like b- doing something, not just like friendly stuff. Yeah, nitty gritty. Like, doing a thing, building a thing together. And I was like, uh, Brian, what do you think about this? Instant reply. And like right back at me, like, oh, hello, hi, how about this? Yep, how about this? Boom, boom, boom. How about this? Like we're just like we're two type A personalities, just like bouncing ideas back. It's like, yeah. oh, I just did a thing. I just did a thing. We're building a thing, I, and I don't even have to wait. Brian's working. This is fantastic. I love this. Yes. Whereas I'm a little more magical, a little more mercurial. You do. I'm you a are. Little, I'm a little yeah. all over the place. You know. Uh, just a little bit. So it's what happens when you're the flavor. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you know. It doesn't just ha- You know. It doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen. No. You gotta, it's a lot of, it takes a lot of marination. It takes a lot of like. Uh, yeah. Also, I struggle with attention deficit disorder, so sometimes my phone, I don't know where it is. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> okay. I do. I well, do, try I, not to take that compliment as a slight towards me, but that's fine. I told you not to because it's not. I just I enjoy working with Brian. Um. <laughs> uh, if I were to uh, if I were to uh, compliment uh, Brian. Um, he, uh, Brian doesn't do anything halfway. Oh, he whole asks everything. Yeah. Which can be frustrating at times, but, but it's very, it's very endearing. Like there's no, like if Brian says he's going to do something, he does it Mm -hmm. in a way that I respect. Um, yeah. Great. And that's three. We did it. Yeah. Contract fulfilled. Brian's a, he's a very good friend and he's honestly if if I were to actually give a legitimate comp, uh like a, a podcast related compliment. Okay. It is well we, you know we've gone into business together and there are times where um you know you recommend your friend for a job mm-hmm. and part of you is even though I recommended Brian cuz he was the right person for the job. Right. But like the relief when he like brought it and proved that was like it's it's a great feeling when like you you bring in your friend and they like make you look good yes you know what i mean yes and he's like brian has totally done that he mm-hmm. produces the absolute bejesus out of this show he d- this show would not exist without brian i can't believe we're, we've talked about brian for like 20 minutes it's been more like four it feels like 20 doesn't it <laughs> get this stank off me Ugh. i'm gonna text him Ugh. right now we rolled 20 you son of a bitch <laughs> enjoy your compliments you're very rude <laughs> type 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 well we roll this is this 20. is this is a fantastic podcast i know right there. type 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 <laughs> <laughs> Let him know. Let him know. Wow, guys, that's so nice of you. <laughs> All right. All so, right. Legend of Zelda. Legend of Zelda. Basically, well, okay. So, first things first. For those people, and there's probably maybe five of them that have never played any of the any of the games. 18 Legends of Zelda games that have come out since like 83 or whatever. Mhm. Jay Let's give the good people a plot drop of what the the games basically are. Normally, you are playing as Link, which is weird because the games are called the Legends of Zelda games. But you're playing as Link. Link is normally a Hyrulean or uh, Kakariko, depending on what what game you're playing. Um, he, he is uh, your protagonist, and you are trying to save Princess Zelda. Uh, from uh, the power Ganon or Ganondorf, depending on uh, what game you're playing. You are trying to defeat Ganon, and you uh, make your way through. It's an action-adventure, and you have a sword and a shield, mm-hmm. and you make your way through the, through uh, different dungeons, acquiring new items that help you uh, solve puzzles. Uh, there's a staggering amount of puzzles and like uh, action puzzles to solve, 
Uh, you use uh, separate items and different things in order to do so. And as you progress through more and more dungeons, you get more and more powers and abilities that help you progress through the open world as well. Uh, and eventually you had to defeat all of the uh, shrines or temples or whatever, whatever they are in that game. And you get powerful enough that you are able to go and defeat Ganon. And save the day. And save the day. But yeah, it's a lot of action adventure, but also a lot of puzzles. A little platforming as well. Some platforming. Some, some platform, but mostly action adventure, puzzle yes. solving, getting cool gear, using cool gear. Yes. Yeah. That is like the, the gist of a Zelda game. And it's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. They're a blast. I've played, I I, I want to say all of them, except for like, I didn't play the Minish the, Cap games. The stuff on the, the Game Boy? I had I had all the Game Boy games. Really? Oh yeah, dude. Oh wow, you had four dude, swords and uh, Link's Awakening, Spirit Tracks and stuff. Uh, Spirit. Have you ever played Spirit Tracks? No. It's so fun. That really? Game, that game. The the DS Spirit Tracks and uh, the other one, uh, the Phantom Hourglass. Oh, uh-huh. those games are fun. Really? Well, they're also in the Wind Waker world too, so you get the oh. boat. Oh. Um. Yeah, those games are fun. Honestly, I there is a large part of me that almost prefers to play Zelda games on a game. Like the Game uh, Boy ones are some of my favorites. Really, dude, Link's Awakening is like it doesn't get better than that, in my opinion. Okay, like I I, I know that uh, a Link to the Past is is the best game. I know that conceptually, but for me, Link's Awakening is my favorite. Oh wow, okay, yeah, that's great. Um, but these are these are games that have spanned pretty much every console for Nintendo. Yes, it's a tentpole franchise for them. Yeah, it's a huge deal. Um, and I would argue uh, that like there are multiple Zelda games in like the best games of all time lists. Oh yeah, well I mean, what was it? Um, Ocarina of Time is the reason why we have a lock on feature in all video games. Yes, because Nintendo was the first one to go 3D. And, right? This is the first first 3D system? No, I believe... Was uh, that PlayStation 2? It's, I think they all kind of... I, I don't know which one actually came kind of came coalesced first, in the mid-90s kind of, there? Yeah, kind of coalesced. But there. I know the lock-on feature started in Ocarina. Yeah. Because... At least to, how, the, how to, track, to the elegant yeah. degree that yes, it came... because you wouldn't be able to track in. items in three three dimensions with, a, with the controls otherwise. So we have Zelda to thank for that. Oh, man. Have you ever played Ocarina on the 3DS? No, I've only played it on the GameCube because it's it's in 3D. It's really good. Oh, okay. I man, the th- did you do you ever own a 3DS? Mm-mm. It's insane to me that that technology did not take off because it's 3D without having 3D goggles. Really it tracks your eyes. It does. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's really spooky. Whoa. Yeah, it's really cool. I did not know that. Yeah, it's really neat. Uh, before we get too much further into uh, Zelda and our our how we've uh, dealt with it or played with it in uh, our lifetimes. How about we do the thing we've kind of forgotten the past couple of weeks? How, man, how did we forget? We've forgotten this multiple times. and it's, I think it, we got too excited to talk about the things. Yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. the, the things we've been talking about lately have been like really big banger movies. They're like, yeah, we want to talk about this. And we got yes. so excited to talk about our feelings when we think about the movie. To we, had, yes, we just forgot uh, to yeah. kick it to Brian, who's so nice. As we just said, he's and so also, good. he is the biggest Zelda nerd. Is uh, he of, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, Brian, I know this is probably going to be one of your longest segments ever. But why don't when it comes to the, the Legend of Zelda franchise, why don't you roll that beautiful bean fun fact footage? Thank you, gentlemen. Today we're trying to fix, or should I say, pitch the Legend of Zelda. I love the Legend of Zelda. Hyrule is my second home. Like Jay, I've played them all. I've beaten them all to 100%. Yes, I got all 900 Korok seeds. And I can beat Ocarina of Time from memory, including the Water Temple, because all you gotta do is move that silly underwater block before you change the water level. Anyway, sorry, I digress. Including Tears of the Kingdom and excluding all the 3D and revamps, there are 19 games starting in 1986. In order... 
The Legend of Zelda, The Adventure of Link, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Oracle of Seasons and Ages, I counted that as one. Four Swords Adventure, Minish Cap, Twilight Princess, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Track, Skyward Sword, A Link Between Worlds, Triforce Heroes, Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom. There are also some spin-off games, and of course, The Legend of Zelda cartoons, featured in the 1989 Super Mario Bros. show. Now, if you care, Breath of the Wild has a 97% on Metacritic and game rankings, and the highest rated game is Ocarina of Time at 99%. Those are also the highest selling Zelda titles. Breath of the Wild is number one by a lot. Shout out to Rexy for the TikTok help. And yes, I took off work to play Tears of the Kingdom. Anyway, back to you, gentlemen. Great job, Brian. Well done. That was, wow, that was so much, Brian. Yeah. Yeah, he's he gets really into it. That was a whole dark world full of Zelda knowledge. He actually a hundred percented Breath of the Wild, which was buck wild. A hundred percent? Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. That's a lot. Um, that's a full game. Yeah. That's a whole lot of stuff in that game. I still can't believe you can't play. You have not played Breath of the Wild. Oh, simply because I think it might be my favorite. It may be. <clears throat> Does this make sense? Sure. Uh. It may not be the best game of all time. Okay. Or the best game I've ever played. Sure. It has been the best time I've ever had playing a video game. Oh, really? Does that make any sense? Absolutely. I, I, man, just, it's, it's an open world and it never feels boring. Wow. You're just like running around trying to find stuff and it's just like... Taking out moblins and fighting giant yeah, lion guys. Climbing mountains just to see, just cause. Just to see what's there. Yeah, it's awesome. I just like can't even get over, like, I can't even get over how that game like just. It was. It's just so appealing, from like from an open from people who like open world games like that. Mm -hmm. Like it's just the world feels so robust. Around ever like I'm finding like having my own little adventures and my own little weird stuffs happening, and I was like, yeah, I bet shit. Like, I, I, it feels like a unique experience just to me. Yeah. Like, ah man, this guardian over here keeps killing me, and I have problem is I keep spawning on the top of the mountain, and it's like I have to slide. To, it's there's just it's just a breathtaking. You can, you can experience. surf shields and all sorts of stuff. Man, and you can't. I can't. The, the Tears of the Kingdom is in a week, and I just like can't even contain myself. With how excited I am with it. Um, just because... I mean, hell, even playing the, the Hyrule Warriors games. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, oh, I like really care about this world. I forgot how much I really care about all this and all these characters. Jay loves that Calamity era. I well, do. I did some research this past week. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, here, let me ask you this first. When did you when did you first play Zelda? What's your, what is your Zelda journey? What was I your played, first game? I played Link's Awakening on the on my Game Boy. That was your first one you ever played? Yes, sir. Ah. Um, and it was a game that I got too early. Uh-huh. Um, it was a game that I didn't, when I first was given it, I didn't fundamentally understand how to actually play it correctly. Uh-huh. And so I hated it. Uh-huh. Um, and then a couple years later, I picked it up and was like, oh, this is one of the best games I've ever played. I can't stop thinking about it. And then hammered it like hammered the, like went all the way through that game so hard. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think a lot of people have that experience. I first I played the first Zelda when it came out in was it eighty five eighty six. Whoa! And and I was far far too young for it because back in the day, nothing. There's no, there's no internet. There's no maps. There's nothing. And I was too young to like, uh -huh. okay, so this is the situation. I got to map this out myself. Nope. I, what, my, my brain was not that formed yet as a six-year-old, seven-year-old. I did it, The first game was like, I didn't get that far because I just, because unlike Mario, it's just like, just keep going. And it's just like the world keeps, it's like, I don't, how do I, I don't know how to find my way through this open world. This doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, no. And then I got the second one. Link to the Past? No, no, no. Uh, uh, the the Adventure of Link, the side scroller one. Oh yeah, yeah. <sighs> Over my head. Yeah, it's and also it's, like, it's also not a very. Good it's game. not a good game. It's not good. I mean, I don't, and I don't think. I think I eventually beat the first game ever on an emulator much later in life. Oh okay. I never beat Link's Awakening because it's like because I, I never got to Shadow Link or anything like that. It's like I because. 
I don't know what I'm doing. This is not the same game as your first one. Yeah. So why are we even here? So the first Zelda game that I actually truly enjoyed and actually beat was A Link to the Past. Because it made way more sense to me. And, and I guess I was, was old enough for it. It's like, oh, now I get it. Oh, because it's like, especially it's like, that, that was kind of, like the fir- kind of the first game of like, hey, you ha- you are story locked to only go in certain places. Yes. And then you have to go here, go get these medallions, and then go to the Lost Woods, and then get the Master Sword, and then go to the castle, cut down that paint door, and go in and lose Zelda, and now you got to go to the Dark World. Y- Thank you, game. I needed direction, and you gave it to me, and now yeah. I know where I'm going. Uh, Woo! Uh, this is fun as shit. Woohoo! Water Temple. I love it. Yeah, then maybe you you might not maybe you might not like Breath of the Wild. Cause I don't mind open world games. I just need a direction. I need a little bit of fencing. That's. I need a little bit of fencing. You want a li- You want someone to like very gently hold your hand. Not hold my hand. Just be like the main story is that way. Well, that's one thing about I like Breath of the Wild because you kind of look on the horizon and go, "What's that?" <laughs> and then you just run towards that thing, and then it's like, "Oh, welcome to, welcome to this place. Here's a quest. All right, neat. I'm gonna go do that quest. What?" And then you get done with the quest, and you go, "Huh? Oh, what's that?" Yeah. Unlike, like, say, Horizon Zero Dawn, where or uh, Forbidden West, where it's like big ass map. All sorts of, like, so many things you could do, but the map is set up to be like, yeah, but the quest is here. Yes. So, so you'll never forget the quest is actually here, and you're actually circling around, where, but, like, your main quest is right there. So, like, you're never actually all that far away. Yeah. But back in the day, they didn't have stuff like that. No. So, like, Link to the Past is like, yep, got it now, and then when Ocarina came out, it's just like... Holy, I'm a I'm a time traveler, and I'm a kid and adult Link. Cause adult like or teen adult Link, teenage Link was like the first time I was like, yeah, I want to be that guy. Yeah, because that I was just I was like just around that age. Like, yeah, that's what I would look like if I had the red armor. Yeah, let's go. Woo woo! Got the mirror shield. Got the master sword. It's so funny. Wrecking stuff. Let's go. Woo-woo. Well, I got the bigger on sword. Woo woo! That makes I like sense. The bigger on sword. Um, yeah, I think Ocarina of Time was the game that, like, really, like, because before Ocarina of Time, at least in my opinion, like, Link to the Past was, was great and all, and it was very influential of everything, but, like, I feel like Ocarina of Time is the game that got the most people into the game. Well, modernized it. Yes. Because most of the games now are basically just kind of like Ocarina. Yes. Like, it's... That game, I even I played through that like maybe five years ago again, and it it's just as fun as it ever was. Yeah, like it holds up, and like, it's also got a fantastic soundtrack. It sure does, but yeah, you should play it on. I mean, if you want to borrow my 3ds and play it on 3D, it's pretty dope. Cool, because when you like when you bring out the air, like you can see depth of field. It's kind of fun. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's really good. Cool. Yeah, it's really fun. But yeah, once uh, after Ocarina came out, and I was like, this is amazing. Oh my God, I'm time traveling and all this is so cool. And then the next game after that was Wind Waker. Yeah. And I was like, and you get a boat about, and it's about, awesome. I was about almost in college by that point. And I was like, oh, this is games for kids now. Oh. Uh, from yes, okay. Cons- okay. Like, from an art well, I direction guess... standpoint, I can see your point. But then you play the game and you go, "Oh, it's the same thing. It's just got a little bit of a cartoony vibe." Oh, to it. it and it took me a while to get to that point. But like, I am like, "Oh, this isn't." Oh, I'm, I'm Wind too Waker old, I'm is too maybe old one for of the better now. games ever made. Okay. Oh, the fir- no, the first the first version of it is 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 so grind heavy that I almost didn't. Like especially when I got like oh I'm kind the of new remasters fixed yeah because they fixed it in the remaster yeah, yeah but that first there was like yeah you, you don't you just gotta sail around trying to find the, the triforce pieces <clears throat> guys come on God, this is so can't we just can't we just please move this forward a little fat like Resident Evil do we can we just get Ashley do we have to mess around in the left can't we I agree. just Please give me the Triforce so I can go down to the bottom of the ocean and fight Ganon and get this game over with. This has been fun, but like I'm ready. Story wise, come on. And then after that, I was like, yeah. I, I didn't touch Twilight or uh, or uh, Skyward Sword because I didn't have a uh, didn't have a, I didn't have the Wii. Yeah, and I think I mean we played a little bit of Twilight 
uh, for when we were starting the gaming channel. We thought that was going to be the biggest thing we ever did. Boy, we, did we! <laughs> Boy, but, howdy! But also, I don't think I don't think you and I really had a lot of fun with that game. Nah, not really. Yeah, it doesn't really. There's something about it that just like snaps wrong, and I'm not sure why. It's slow. I think that's it. But also, like the art direction for me really kind of just turns me off. Oh, okay. Like it just feels like it feels like fi- a Final Fantasy game in a way that I don't love, which I don't mind. But it's, yeah, but, it, it's, but it was a little slow. There's dissonance to it when it's not a Final Fantasy game. You You're know right. what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a certain art style that Zelda kind of has to be. Yes. There's a lot of variance in there, clearly, from like Breath Whereas, of the Wild to like Wind Waker to Link yeah, to the Past. Yeah, but I think Breath of the Wild, like the vibe is totally different, but also at the same time, it feels the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It looks different, but you know, it is a different enough direction, but still in the, safely in the. Oh yeah, this is what Zelda should look like. Yeah. Yeah. I, man, Tears of the Kingdom. Every time, every time, in every trailer we've gotten for Tears of the Kingdom, yeah, when they play like the main theme and, he, and like Link's doing something, like I kind of cry. Oh, I would, I would argue that Link's uh, the, I guess the Hyleland, the main theme of the Legend of Zelda. Hyleland, 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 Leland, hi, Highland, Highland, Hylian, Hylian, the Hylian theme, the main theme of the Legend of Zelda yeah. games, is the best. Uh, yeah, that's the best song in all of video games. That's the best song. That's the best song? That's the best song. That's the best song. Yes. I'm not saying I disagree with you. I'm just searching my brain to see... Pick one that's better than that. There's a lot of very good songs. And, like, between one and two is a very small... But, like... That's the best song okay. from all video games. Uh, I like um, Bubble Bobble, maybe. Oh, okay. Hit me with that Bubble Bobble Bop. You ever play Bubble Bobble? No! Oh. It's a good game. Ah. Cute little dragon shooting bubbles out of her mouth. Sure. Uh, yeah, that's that's a that's definitely a banger, Jay. Yeah? Here's the other cool thing about Legend of Zelda. There's so many games that they have three different timelines for them. Yeah. Yeah. You and know- people have been arguing about yeah. where do things fall in which timeline for years <sighs> until Nintendo, what, a couple years ago, be like, hey, here's the... Mostly official. Well, because it's open to interpretation later on. Time. Yes. Well, and you want to know my favorite theory about Tears of the Kingdom? Sure. What's that? Uh, my this is, and it's why the symbol is the Ouroboros, like the snake eating its tail. Sure. Uh, there is a huge theory, and I and honestly, from everything that I've seen and all the points this person made, I think they're making a very compelling point. Okay. Um, Skyward Sword is technically the first game in the franchise. Yes, it is. And if you notice that they're all in the sky inside of Skyward Sword, and it's a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of properties in Tears of the Kingdom is moving up into oh, the air, they're floating. Yeah, there is a, a pretty good amount of evidence indicating to, that the storytellers might be indicating that um, it's going basically like they're going to have this game be the end set is the, up beginning is the end set up Skyward Sword. Like so, they're basically going to like be like time's a flat circle. Like it's fine. It's all just gonna, it's all just gonna rotate around one. It's like, oh, oops, oh, this is they're all reborn and like they they're just gonna you're just gonna get they just keep getting reincarnated until they just start the cycle over again. So it's like gunslinger. Kind of, yeah. That's it's nuts. Cr- yeah, it's really crazy. That's a little I th- nuts. I think it's really ballsy. I think it'd be really fun. We'll see. Mm. We'll see. We will see. We shall see. But yeah, I I. What what's what's your favorite item in any of Zelda games? Hookshot. Yeah, if it's not hookshot, you're not paying attention. I the one thing that I did love that I loved about like Ocarina of Time, and and honestly, the Game Boy games had this as well. When it was like you had to like use fire to like clear stuff or mm-hmm. light torches. Sure. Like the fire rod. The fire rod, but there was also like like in Ocarina of Time, like you could light a Deku stick on fire. Yeah, 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 and things like that. And I know that sounds stupid now, mm-hmm. as like a revolutionary thing. Oh, but back but in like, the day, but wow, yes, 
It was like you very rarely, like very rarely did you get items in a game that like they're all of their capabilities were not immediately explained to you. Yep. And you like had to just make the logical leap like, oh, I can light this on fire and then hey, hit listen. this spider man with the yeah. spider web with fire. Maybe you can burn it, those spider webs. I know. Hey, it's Link. Link. It's so Link. cool. Link. The, the Deku, Link. The Deku stick. Just put the stick in the fire. <laughs> Link. Stick. Fire. Burn. Listen, and, then, hey. and now we have like Breath of the Wild that's adding all these like different mechanics. That my my favorite thing about all the mechanics in the game is that like I feel like they develop these mechanics with all of these puzzles already in mind. Oh like, sure, Breath of the Wild like all these like small dungeons that you're like trying to like get your little thing to like give yourself more hearts mm-hmm. or more stamina. All of them were had their own different interior puzzles to them, mm-hmm. and they all. And the only reason they added gave you new abilities is because it's like, oh, you're gonna have to solve puzzles with these. Yeah. Congrats. Like that's that's really really fun. Enjoy using your tablet. Well, and also, I mean, and Nintendo has like kind of taken their taken like they really pay attention to like the fan base of these games, and like we're getting uh, in this new Tears of the Kingdom like the ability to like combine stuff and like build like some weird contraptions. Oh, that's right. And you sh- know why they're doing that? Because Because people were were already doing that in Breath of the Wild. They were figuring out ways to, like, break the game and be like, well, if you stand in one of these minecarts and then you magnetize the other minecart, it basically turns into a plane. And they're like, screw it, just give them the ability to build their own planes. Oh, yeah, there's mechs in the next one. Yeah, Yeah. dude, it's like, yes, 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 yes. I can't wait. I cannot wait for this game, man. Oof. Oof. I like. I know. I need to stream it because that will get a like. That will be a big draw. It will be a big draw. But like, I also kind of just want to play it completely by myself in like a dark room and just like eat funyuns and sure and just, like hole up for a, just a like month. Yeah, go cross-eyed on this game. Mm-hmm. But I guess I have to have an audience for that. You don't have so. to. That's your choice. You can you can do whatever it's, you want. We're in a dude. There is a baby coming. We got to do the best thing for the business at all turns. That's how it works. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know? I I do know, but you know, yeah, free will. I'm gonna force. I'm not gonna force a choice on you. I I, I appreciate that. You're welcome. I appreciate that. Um, I mean, honestly, I think I think we can move right into our fixes. Oh, do you think we've got enough items to um, pull the fix from the sword? I think so. I've got the second hook shot, and I can just swing. Dude, the hook shot is just the hook shot's it, it's man. It's just it. It's so fun. It grapples. It stuns. It pulls things. Through. It's just it's uh, grappling hooks. If we've learned anything from Jedi Survivor and Horizon Zero or Forbidden West, when you add hook shots and grappling hooks into the game, the Arkham games, like it's just like the game does. Yep. Yeah. Reversals way easier and like more it. fun. Let's go. I like this. Yes, please. It's just fun, man. Yeah. Away. Link away. Man, I want... Keep up Navi. Let's go. Can you imagine that? But also I, I have a soft spot also for uh, the bow and arrow just cause it's fun. Oh, it is fun. Like shooting folks off the back of a horse. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Oh, it's so good. So good. Um. All right, it's time to pitch some Zelda properties. Yeah. It's time to pitch some Zelda properties. Jay's going first. I am. He's got he's got quite the pitch for us. Did Brian ever get back to you about? Uh... He wrote ha ha ha. Um. Okay. I have it in my notes. Uh, okay. Boop boop boop. Link. Da na na na. Okay. <laughs> Here is my fix. Nice. I am I am making a mini series. Okay. I'm not it is I guess we could just call it a show nowadays, but much like a limited ha- series. A limited I think like yeah, Obi-Wan. Limited series. Yeah, six episodes, limited series. I'm doing exactly six episodes. Yeah, it's a, it's a one season show. Yeah, well, I mean the BBC's been doing stuff like this. This limited series. And I am solving the one problem that I had with Breath of the Wild mm-hmm. in that they introduced us to a lot of these cool, really, really cool characters. Okay. And then, but also kept us in mind and would continu- continuously remind us that these characters were already all dead. Oh, the Guardians? Yes. The Guardians for the Beast the Spirits Guardians and stuff for the, the so Beast Machines? Cool. Mm-hmm. All of them are so awesome. Mifa, Rivali, and Daruk. They are 
so cool, and, and they need to be in more things. Yeah. Well, they're dead, so they can't be. So we, we can. Um. Do. So my first episode. Um, What's the name of your show? What's up? What's the name of your show? Oh, it's just called the, the Legend the Legend of Zelda. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I would say yeah, like I think yeah, it's just the Legend of Zelda, the okay. show. Okay. So, the full title being The Legend of Zelda, the show. Stop asking so many questions. How about oh, okay. Adam? Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. A limited it's, series it's just still for going. me. Yeah, that's me talking now, but it's technically also in the title as well. So, am I reading or am I just talking? Wow, I don't know. The, the, so meta. Yeah, very thanks meta. Nintendo. I appreciate it. Um, so we, my first episode of the Legend of Zelda miniseries event. Shut um, up, Adam! You're, you're ruining the show. Yep. What, what's up? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> the first episode of Legend of Zelda. Shut up, Adam! You're ruining the show. All your questions will be answered. Yes. Is um. We are basically. I am doing the events that lead up to Breath of the Wild. Oh, okay. Because if we're making this show now, we want to market the the timeline in which we are at. Sure. Like, and these new games are like a brave new world for the, the Legend age of, of calamity. Um, and so this one opens up in Hyrule Castle, um, and we are getting a a long drawn out speech from her father, the king, um, in regards to. Uh, they have figured out that like Zelda isn't just magically sensitive, but she is the one that was destined to save the world from Ganon. Okay. Like she has magical powers and they were like, cool. Um, she used it to protect her home city for a long time. Mm -hmm. And now she's like kind of brought that down and here to kind of take out the trash. All right. Um, but, uh, Zelda is, uh, a little bit younger and in this and we're, we're starting like maybe two years before the main action of the regular show okay um and zelda is in a ceremony and she finds out that it's her destiny to sell seal the darkness okay but she deals with like a lot of self-doubt mm -hmm. and doesn't really understand what that means sure yeah and so she like that's her cross to bear um uh also, in this first episode, we learn that um, not only is Zelda supposed to defeat Ganon, but Zelda has also been working uh, with the Sheikah mm -hmm. on the plans for Divine Beasts. Oh, okay, cool. Um, mm -hmm. These Divine Beasts being the thing that like would help and assist her in defeating Ganon. Um, this drives a wedge between her and her father, the king, because he was also there for like the prophecy and knows that like she's supposed to save the day. So why would she be wasting her time instead to... of training to defeat Ganon? Stop trying to find contingency plans to help everybody when you can, if you're powerful enough, you can just stop Ganon. She's like, I don't even know what being powerful enough means, what that looks like. This is just a contingency plan. Yeah, what's wrong with the plan so B? teenage yeah. Zelda and her adult father just like fighting, <laughs> over, fighting over what's more important. Mm -hmm. Um, and eventually, you know, Zelda, it's, it, she wins the day and um, she, like, they send out ravens or however they do it in high. Well, let's, let's say they communicate via their Sheikah slate. Sure. Because this is before Breath of the Wild. Uh, she communicates to all the leaders across the world that they want to, um, they want to pick one from each race to assist in building. Sure. But also pilot that divine beast. So it's a way to unify uh, and yeah. that's the only reason the king allows it. Because he okay. was like, this will unify Hyrule sure. against this mm -hmm. common enemy. I don't I don't think we're gonna need it, but if it's here enough. Yeah. Yes. He re, he very aggressively believes in her. Yes. Like in a strict way. Yes. He's kind of a jerk about it. Mm -hmm. Um But it is coming from a good place. And oh. since uh, I think it also pays homage to a lot of uh Disney or uh Nintendo properties rather the like specifically legend of zelda is that we're starting with young zelda and young link yes um younger ish mm -hmm. and we find out that uh when uh when all of the races are going to be bringing the rito uh which are the bird people right uh the gorons which are the rock people and uh the the, zora the zora there we go i almost called them i almost called them chimera maids um <laughs> the zora <laughs> Uh, when they are going to present their champions uh -huh. to like court at large, there will also be a tournament 
to figure out which knight is going to uh, be put on uh, Princess Zelda's uh, detail. Do- detail. Mm-hmm. Cause there was also a part of the prophecy that like a knight, a knight will assist Zelda in sealing the darkness. Uh, so, so Link decides to take part uh, in this competition. Mm-hmm. And uh, at any point in the show, does he say, "Excuse me, princess"? No, but he, uh, he. I don't think he ever does. But he does say, "Yeah, yeah, 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 that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that is just fully episode one. It's more like exposition backstory, setting up. Yeah, learn a lot about Hyrule. Yeah. Episode two, um, is the. Uh, we flash forward to when all of the different races are bringing all bringing their champions mm-hmm. uh, to the Hyrule Castle, mm-hmm. but in in the festivities we also have uh, the competition of the knights, uh, and so in order to be the winner, the first uh, the first uh, competitor to come back with a Boko Goblin, a Moblin, and Lionel Horn oh. will be the person chosen to protect sure. uh, the princess. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a fetch quest. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Pretty much. And so a lot in this episode, a large amount of Link's activities is like fighting all of these creatures. Yeah. Um, all the while, uh, the Sheikah, who are like the ninja clan, um, they are um, they're basically trying to like sell these divine beasts to the king a little bit more. Sure. Because they're also the ones that like help design them. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they talk about how it's going to like uh, unify all the races and that's then the king's still like I don't totally still trust this but whatever. Um th- okay, and so the end of this episode, okay. In order for Link Link t- is a little too young to yep. to win this competition, mm-hmm. but through taking a shortcut, Link befriends a couple of Kororok. Yep, the little things you have. The little the yep. little leaf <laughs> people. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so the little leaf people like basically like prank and trickster their way to make sure Link wins. Oh. Uh, so I also okay. like the idea of like Link kind of having like a Korok like on his shoulder the whole time. Okay. Like, they kind of they really like him. They kind of follow him around. Yeah. Um, Link, uh, th- with uh, the power of of them, uh, gets all the, uh, gets all the prerequisites. All mm-hmm. the MacGuffins are in his possession, and Link is named knight. Um. And then uh, through through that, we are uh, also announced. Uh, Link is announced right before they announce the champions of all of the, the beasts yep. of, of the divine beasts. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and the Gerudo as well. I forget them. The, the desert, the desert ladies. That's so good. It's very good. It's when the claps come in there. It's so good. I'm like, ooh, ooh, let's go get him. Let's get him. Ooh. So we have moving to episode three. All right. It is one year later. Ooh, okay. Time jump. Um, Zelda has been training, but is struggling with the burden of her power. Of course. And it's not her relationship with her father is strained because she thinks she's not working hard enough mm-hmm. because she just, she's distracted by, by all the other things she's trying to help with. Yeah, build those giant beasts. Um, yeah, she's trying, she's facilitating like building the divine beast with Impa, who's the leader of the Sheikah, yeah. who you actually see in Breath of the Wild as well, mm-hmm. because she's just lived for a very long time because she's a monk and that's how it works. Um, so Zelda with, uh, Impa, uh, decides to visit the three, like, kind of elder shrines. Okay. In order to, like, kind of gain, gain the balance of the Triforce mm-hmm. within her. It actually goes quite well. Oh, that's good. Um, Finally, something. And then we cut to, uh, throughout episode three, um, Link is, uh, is helping, uh, Mifa, uh, who is our, uh, Zora, uh, captain. Sure. Uh, he is facilitating like their divine beast, the elephant being built. Okay, and it it gets done, but then uh, Mifa is supposed to drive it, and Link teaches her. Okay, but uh, does Link have his learner's permit at this point? 
No, it's less that he doesn't he he doesn't teach her how to drive it. He's like, you already know how to drive it. You just need to be confident in yourself. Oh, okay. Uh, so a lot of what Link has to do is reassuring Mifa of her own worthiness to mm-hmm. be a Divine Beast champion. Uh, be- and we find out that a large amount of it is because like sh- uh, her father just had a son, and it's always felt like he always wanted a son rather than daughters. Yeah. And so like I can't be like the champion of my people when I'm not the- even the champion of my father. And so there's a lot, you know. We eventually have a come to- come to terms with her dad and realizing yeah. what um, I come what- to Triforce moment. Pretty much. Um, and so, uh, and that all comes to a head when Zelda, who is going to all the shrines with Sheik, with uh, Sheika, um, are attacked by a uh, attacked by monsters. Oh no! And uh, Mifa and Link save her with the power of I think it's Varudna, is the is the elephant divine okay. beast. So they step on some pools and they get that crown. Pretty much, pretty much. Sorry, I'm just I I wrote way too much. You, yeah, you, did you write paragraphs, Jay? Yeah. Did you pull an Adam and write seventeen yeah, paragraphs? Yeah, I did. Um, Do you really like Zelda, Jay? <laughs> yeah. But like Link, because he is Zelda's champion, is like sure. able to know that she's in trouble at the shrine, and that's, oh, cool. That's okay. how they know to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and after they save her, uh, Link and Mifa get a message on their Sheikah slate um, that uh, Urbosa. Uh, who is uh, from the Gerudo has been developing their divine beast as well. Uh, but the Yiga clan Uh-oh. have have taken over the construction site and are holding the divine beast hostage. Uh oh, that's not good. And she's gonna need help. Yeah. Then we move into episode three or no four? No, episode four. I'm I episode I la- I We're halfway episode. through the season. Yes, we're halfway through. There's not much to it. It's really this is. Uh, I just wanted to see these characters in real life. Yeah. Um. Gerudo Valley, uh, Link has to get to Gerudo Valley. Uh, he goes uh, uh, with Mifa, and they have to fight a Molduga on the way there, which are the big, they're big sand sharks. Um, uh, uh, Zelda, along with Urbosa and Mifa, have to talk to the the, the boss of the Yiga clan, mm-hmm. and we find out that like they're trying they're trying to support Ganon. Um, oh, any, no. any way they can, they're just not very good at it. This is the Yida clan. The Yiga clan. They're Ye- basically bad Sheikah. Oh, yeah. Um. Now, uh, as as Link and Urbosa are dealing with like the Yigas, uh, Zelda is back uh, at the next shrine, mm-hmm. and she is continuing like her like power training and like trying to like level up her ability sure, to like yeah. contain Ganon. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, she is, it's not going well and she accidentally slips and like makes like through the Triforce and makes contact with Ganon. Oh no. And like starts seeing like what that true energy is look like and like what she's actually up against. Mm-hmm. And it, like it shakes her and waves her, but also it said it activates a blood moon, which is something from Breath of the Wild. Okay. And it's the, what I like to consider the first blood moon. And then like basically like summons a bunch more monsters. Oh no. Um, and upon the Yiga were about to surrender because they were like, "Look, we're we're building these to defeat Ganon. Like, you don't have to like worship this guy. Like, he will kill all of you. Like, he, he doesn't matter. care about he you. He doesn't yeah. care about you." And they kind of like got it worked, and then they see the blood moon, and they go, "Oh, he's coming." And so the the they're not sure if uh like the uh the divine beast for the Gerudo is the camel. Okay. And uh, they're they're like, well, it's kind of technically done. We just haven't taken it for a test drive yet. And the Yiga take off with the Divine Beast. Grand Theft Divine Beast. And so there's like a little chase sequence with the uh, with the Sand Seals. Okay. But the Yiga get away with. Oh uh, no. Um, the Divine Beast. Uh, episode five. Uh. Uh, Link, uh, I guess this is actually going to be seven episodes. Oh, forgive me. Surprise, episode seven. Uh, I, I have two episode threes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in order to get in order to get this divine beast back from the Yiga, sure. Uh, Link has to go to the Rito clan. Yep. Uh, which uh, they have been in at least in this continuity have been very secluded mm-hmm. because they're up in they're up in the mountains because they're bird people. Yeah, bird so, people, bird um, people. Link has to go and uh, get assistance from the Rito, and so he's got to talk to the big owl. 
the big fluffy yeah, owl. Because yeah, uh-huh. we all know if we were high ruling characters, I would be a Rito and I'd be a big owl, yeah. and you'd want to pet me. Um, and so he he basically gets Rito like gets the Rito to come help him. Sure. Along with um, uh, look, I can't what. what? I always call him Ravioli. Okay. Uh, what man? I I was like, me- I was trying to re- make sure I remembered his actual name mm-hmm. because everyone in chat always just calls him Ravioli, and so I always call him Ravioli. The 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 bird, ch- the Rito champion. Sure. Uh, ra- Ravioli. Um, we tried. We tried. <laughs> I even haven't read this Ravioli. He does. Um, That's. Uh, Ravioli. Uh. Uh, and the bird people come and assist uh, the Gerudo with getting their divine beast back, but they get beaten back. And um, we what what eventually what happens is is that uh, Link thinks that the Ritos abandon them mm-hmm. in their time in their in their combat, and they're still fighting, and they're still fighting, and they're still fighting. And the end of the episode. Um, Basically, uh, Ravioli shows up with their divine beast, right, the it's a, eagle. It's a, yeah, it's a flying and device. Just, yeah. And absolutely just bodies. Yeah. They're like, oh, we're going to have to get, like, we're going to have to do some work at rebuilding this thing, but, like, it's, yeah. down, it's down a hump. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's real good. So we have three divine beasts are basically, like, online. Ready to go. Um, all Also, through this episode, um, Zelda is also continuing her training with Sheikah. Mm-hmm. Um, she has a her final vision of Ganon mm-hmm. at this third shrine, um, and she finally gets like the full prophecy of what's going to happen, and she realizes that she basically it, she realizes like the final conclusion of how this is all going to go, mm-hmm. and we'll get back to that. Oh, okay. Um, so we see her have the vision, and we don't see the vision. We see her have the vision. We see her face on the thing, and we. I, I like the shot of it. It's like the back of Zelda's head as she's talking to Impa. Mm-hmm. And Impa's like, what did you see? And then it's like, it's panning out. And she's like, well, and it like goes quiet of what she's saying. But we see Impa's face go completely white. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, the penultimate episode is uh, is dealing with uh, Daruk. Um and basically they are the rock pe- uh, Daruk is the leader of the Goron people Gorons, yeah. they're the rock people on the mountain uh, he has to basically convince him uh, now that their divine beast they had the first divine beast online and they have fortified death mountain right and they're like and he has to convince the rock people in order to to actually join the fight because they're like we're safe here yeah we're good we're like, we live in a volcano, homie. What is he going to do? What is he going to do? We have a divine beast. We also live in a volcano. We're fine. Like, And so I like the idea of Link having to like, and this is from Breath of the Wild. He has to like prove his strength. Right. <laughs> and uh, uh, all of that good fun stuff. And eventually he gets uh, a Daruk back online. It's kind of a, a lighter episode. Uh, but then at, at the tail end of that episode, we see... Um, like the main reason that like what eventually convinces them is that like a bunch of a bunch of monsters like get through their defenses yeah. and they are oppressive and they're coming and we finally see um we finally see like the actual oppression of Ganon and like at, at the end of that episode we see like the the power above uh appear above uh the, the castle right and we're in full swing and so what we've set up uh, we basically the like the last episode is that we see the full, um, we see the full war like start to happen, mm-hmm. but we see Zelda reach out to Link, and uh, sh- and she was like, Link, I am I'm in Deku Forest. I need you to I need you to come. Like I'm trapped here. I'm being held hostage. Like I need you to come to the Deku Tree, and free me so I can go seal Ganon. Right. And so Link is fighting his way through all. We have the divine beasts, like all doing what they're like. We see all the things beasting it up. Um, Link fights his way to the Deku tree. Um, and we see, and it's Zelda is there. And, uh, basically uh, he's like, you're not held hostage. Like, I don't what, like what's happening, right? What's going on right now? 
and she's just like she finally reveals that like I we don't win today we win much later she looks at Link and goes one shot Yes, pretty much. And then we see Impa behind Link, like, kind of chloroform him. <laughs> give the... And, like, they put the Master Sword... They give the Master Sword to the Deku tree, and he's like, I will protect this tree. Or, protect this tree. Protect this sword. And uh, they hide away Link. And Zelda has to... Go take on Ganon. Yeah. She basically, like, with the assistance of the Divine Beast, is able to make it to the castle. Mm-hmm. Through all of the guardians that have gone haywire, Ganon has infected everything, and she finally makes it to Ganon. Uh, and Ganon takes one look at her, and she starts to like seal him away. And Ganon looks at her and he goes, "If, if the third piece of the Triforce isn't here, we will just we'll, we will be locked like this for eternity." Yeah, what are you doing? And you and Zelda play? and Zelda's just like I I'm hoping I'm I'm planning on it because she because what she found out was that he, Link was the third piece of the Triforce right and if the three of there there will be like a reckoning a Ragnarok if the three of them are are in one place at the same time right but if they hide away Link like the two of them will just be locked in stasis and so it which will technically nullify Ganon. Mm-hmm. She was just like, I'm not powerful enough, but I don't need to be. I just need to. St- I don't need to beat you. I, I just, just need, need to, to stop you. you. And so she she locks away Ganon, and they and the Sheikah like hide Link away, and he eventually they and the, like tied to a, a to a branch, and they're just kind of like two of them just kind of walking him up a giant hill to throw him in that coffin. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> just kind of. <laughs> While the climactic battle's going on. Yeah, it's a- it's, yeah, and so, and I think the end of the series is Link waking up in, like, waking up from stasis. Mm-hmm. That's the show. Wake Link up! Wake Link up, inside. Time to wake up! <laughs> Save me! Yeah. Grab the master sword, hope you have enough hearts. Yeah. Wake Link, Link up! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's so. That's my. It's just I just want to spend time with all the different. Like all, I love all the champions that they've built, and that's one thing I really like. And it's it's kind of an uh, I kind of ripped off uh, the Hyrule Warriors a little bit. Mm-hmm. They they do a time travel thing that's kind of completely like it's I a, heard. I kind of yeah. It's a lot. Uh, but this is a little bit more of like a dumbed down version of that. But like I just versions. also I would love to see like what like in a live action CG situation, what Arito looks like, yeah. what what the the Zora look like, what the what the Gorons look like. Like I want to see this. Yeah, you know what I mean. I so do. this is like it's a dumbed down version of this, but like that's kind of the structure. Absolutely. Yeah. Was that did I like fugue state a little hard there for a bit or? No. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if I lost you at some point. At no point did you lose me. Okay. Because it was a dumbed down version. Okay. Cool. Seeing as how I never actually played that game, I, I just know enough about the divine beasts and the the races and stuff like that. Dude, it's really it's the game is so. I gotta, I've heard nothing but good I things. Gotta tell you. So I Jay went in a slightly different direction than you did. Okay. Um. Okay. So. Here is my uh, season of... I'm going to write down what I think you're doing. Sure. Just so I can... Okay. Jay is going to write down on a piece of paper. Start a, start a new note start on a my new, phone. Start a new note on his phone. Jay's going to guess what I'm about to hit him with. And then he, we're gonna. I'm going to say what I'm about to do. And then Jay is going to reveal it to everyone. And we'll see if Jay was right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, I present to you... Uh, this is uh, my Zelda property. Okay. Is uh, the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword? Whoa! You're just doing Skyward Sword. I have turned the game Skyward Sword into an eight-episode season. But you never played Skyward Sword. I didn't. But the later versions of the Zelda games are very are better in story than the original ones because sure. they actually have like characters. Actually, story. Yeah. So I was like, oh. 
yo, this is the first story in the Zelda's timeline. And also, if we're starting from somewhere, I mean, you got that's the perfect place to because start. Because I'm I'm viewing this as the, hey, so many people know the Legend of Zelda video yeah. games, but like, there's a lot of people that don't. Sure. But there's so I believe this would be like the best. Like, hey, here's some version of the lore because we I've gone dumbing it down for television, making it a little easier. Sure. And like, this is a really good jumping on point for like, hey. This is kind of what the games are like, so you can jump in here with the story, like, but and the story continues in the games. There's so and there's so many more games to play. Right, righteous. I'm into it. So here we go. Episode one. Um, we so we're we're basically just following uh, a knight in training, Link, as he pat, tries to become the a knight for Skyloft, which is where everybody is. And that, yeah. we're gonna, we're gonna see like the first twenty minutes of this is gonna be like. Learning the world, seeing Skyloft, seeing all the people, the relationships between people. Zelda being, I believe, was the mayor's daughter or something like that. Seeing all of these people and the world that they're living in, knowing that, like, there is no surface. We are just sky, sky people, sky people. <laughs> yeah. Hate land, sky people. Yeah. Because there is no land. There is no, and we learn, we learn a little bit about the the lore of okay. the world of like there's no surface because the gods destroyed a long time ago and we're the only ones left and like you know just little tiny because like Link we're following Link through the city as he's there oh I'm late for the oh I'm late for the training crap and then we're here people like talking to kids about like it, it's like the good lore drops of people talking about stuff as we're yeah. passing them just like the little things here and we'll see stuff around Skyloft about the world and it, we'll, we'll just absorb it through seeing it in snippets of information right as yeah. the world builds itself out. So, you know, Link begins his, um, or tries to finish off his training. Um, we get, you know, some hints of the, the world, the magic behind the world, the great world that destroyed it. We're going to see the d- dynamic between Link, Zelda, and Groose because there's kind of a love triangle there, even though Groose is kind of a dick. Um, but eventually, Link is going to pass his test, becomes a Knight of Skyloft. Zelda is very thrilled about that. The mayor, Zelda's dad, I believe I have that right, is not... The most thrilled because, like, he's not the biggest fan of Link, but Zelda really likes him, so, like, whatever. So, Link and Zelda go celebrate on the flying creature. Who's the birds. Like, the birds. And then Zelda gets yeeted by some magical wind and taken to the surface. Wind. Magical evil wind. Link wakes up in his room, and Fee is standing over him. The, remember the, the sword... Like the Cortana of that game. Yes. So I have this is going to be played by a person, and we're going to Cortana her up a little bit. Yeah. But like, so Fee shows up and is like, "Hey, Link, you're the, the Destiny." Cortana. She's the Master Sword. Basically. Yeah, she's the Master Sword. The program yeah. in the Master Sword. She's going to wake Link up and be like, "You got to come get me. You're the hero destined to save Zelda from this thing." Because like all that prophecy and stuff, you, you the Skyloft, you guys have been talking. Yeah, it's real. You need to come get me. I'm here. So Link, in the middle of the night, goes through Skyloft finds the hidden chamber and grabs the goddess sword and he's like what he is not prepared for this cut to zelda on the surface and impa's there hi i'm your guide we gotta go and so they have a little scene of like zelda's like what is what's happening right now yeah because they gotta be characters so we're gonna follow zelda just a little bit on her adventure yeah. Where she's about to go. Yes. So Link with the sword tells the Zelda's dad, who I still think is the mayor, is like, uh, I'm going to go save Zelda. And everyone's like, I, no one believes him. Okay. And it's like, how did, why did, how did you steal that sword? I was like, I just, because no one can see Fee. So like, Link's got, I'm just, trust me, I, I'm apparently the one who's supposed to save her. She's the sword. And I was like, I'm going to go. And so he jumps on the bird and flies down and just rushes past camera. End of the episode. Oh, cool. So, like, we're just about to start the adventure. Yeah. Cool. Episode two. So, Link's now on the surface and is led by Fee to the Sacred Temple. Yeah. And where he meets an old woman who's like, hey, this is what's going on. You need to go find Zelda. Meanwhile, we, so we cut to Zelda, who's being led by Impa, and they're having, like, like and we're, we're going to follow them, like, through the forest, through the volcano area, through the desert. And just in case we're setting up where Link's about to go. Yeah. And so there's a little bit, you know, lore drops and information about stuff. And like Zelda's like, you have a destiny you, you and you're here and I'm here to help you achieve it. That's, yeah. So Link, after getting some information. That's why we're still down here. Exactly. So Link, after talking to the old woman and, you know, Fee's like, well, we got to go after them. We need her. 
So Link's chasing after, and we're gonna see Link, you know, go some a little a little bit of obstacles, nothing super crazy yet, but go through like the Feral Woods and the the, the, the the volcano where the Gorons are and the um the desert, and eventually he's going to catch up to Impa and Zelda. And I was like, Princess, thank God, I, I, Zelda, I'm finally I'm finally here to get you. Like we gotta go. I gotta get my bird. We gotta head back to Skyloft. And Impa's like, she's not going anywhere. Okay. We need to. We're headed to the Sacred Temple. We need to go there. And he's like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm here to, to save her. And I was like, you're not taking her. And so Impa and Whoa. Link fight. Oh, cool. So we're getting to see this fight. And Impa's really good at fighting. Yeah. And Link's like, I was not prepared for this. <laughs> so Link stops fighting. He's like, okay, well, okay. Well, clearly, like, no one means her harm. But, like, I guess I'll just go with you. Because he's like, go with, just, you know what? Probably just go with her. Just go with Link. Yeah. Maybe just go with her. So they go to this, the Temple of Time where Impa was trying to take them. And I was like, hey, your destiny's here. We need to go here. And they're like, just oh, about to like Shiza. go through the, into this tempa, temple. And that is when the trio is attacked by Girahim. I believe I'm pronouncing... That's how I'm choosing to pronounce his name because I've never actually... Get that, we never got that far in the game. Um, and he's like, in the game, he's like I'm, the, I'm a big bad guy. I'm going to refl- free my master demise and like you know, bring back the darkness in the world. And so Link fights Girahim for the first time. And I was like, whoa, this guy is nuts. What the heck is going on? Impa takes this opportunity. And I was like, hey, Zelda, time to go. And they jump in to this gate of time. And Impa destroys it as they go through, leaving Link and Girahim in the present. And like, Zelda, and then Link's like, what the hell? Oh, oh no. Only Zelda goes through? Yeah, no, Zelda and Impa go through. Leaving Link alone with this, with the bad guy, uh, having no idea what that I, just happened. I've never played Skyward Sword, so I don't, oh okay, so I yeah, don't know any of this. So like, I'm a, I'm a big evil mage guy, and I'm gonna bring back my master. Rah rah rah! And so they're fighting. And it's like ah. So Link, so he's like, Gary Heem's like, damn it. So he leaves because he needed Zelda. So he leaves. Link heads back to the uh, uh heads, and this is episode three. So the, the episode two ends with a dramatic moment of uh, the temple being destroyed behind Impa and Zelda now back in the past. Yes, trapped there. And Link having me like, uh, mid fight. So beginning of episode three, the fin- the fight finishes with Gurhim just like, well, I can't achieve what I needed to now. I'm out. Link heads back to the sacred temple, talks to the old woman, and that is when Groose shows up. Okay. And I was like, what did you do to Zelda? Where is she? Because Groose loves her. Yeah. And thing, but and only thinks poorly of Link. So they start fighting. They're finally having it out, and Link's better than he is <laughs> and he's also got the goddess sword at this point so but he's not gonna he chooses not to use it because like he could totally kill this guy but they're fighting and everything you know they're trying to link's trying to stop this fight um and so the old but the old woman's like yes fight this is entertaining i'm enjoying this uh but she stops him and is like there's another way to get to zelda there's a dormant time gate that you can get through oh yeah. that i know about um but just then the sound of the piggly wiggly it's th- it's through a bunch of hoops you gotta yeah, jump through. Yeah, grab these three MacGuffins and so everything's you know everything seems to be working out and like there's still kind of an animosity between Link and Groose. Um, but then the temple that this old woman is sitting in front of the sacred temple starts to rumble and cracks and then this imprison this imprisoned beast pops out and starts going after Link and Link's like uh what and she is like I'm really sorry about this but you can you stop him please. And so Link's fighting this guy, and then Groose eventually helps him, and they are able to re-imprison this guy back into the sacred temple. Okay. Uh, but basically, at this point, is when uh, the old woman's like, okay, so like, here's what needs to happen. Uh, you have the goddess sword, which is great, but we can open up... That's the key to the time uh, portal to get back to Zelda, but it's not strong enough yet. But there's we have the things here on the it surface. Must feast on blood. It's got yeah. It's got you gotta, monster blood. You need to kill all those all these moblins. Can you kill a thousand moblins? Yeah, man. We need all their guts. So, um, Link's like, okay, I guess I gotta you know get this sword. Ready. I gotta get get myself and the sword ready to go to go back in the past to save Zelda from Impa. Montage. <laughs> no, actually, I'm just kidding. So the next three episodes are gonna be kind of like Mandalorian episodes. Like old school Mando episodes of like, because oh, okay. they did a good job of like Mando rolls into a town, he needs a thing. Okay, you can get that thing, but first you gotta do the side quest. MacGuffin need quest 
three MacGuffin Quest episodes. Yeah, but this, which is very Zelda, uh, you know. Yes, because we wanted, because that's the thing. Like, we can't actually like do dungeon crawls in this show because that's the fun of the game. But we can't really do that in a live action or any type of television version of this because it no. just it doesn't work. This it's not a one for one thing. But like doing a little side quests, like Mando has shown us how they do. Like, yeah, it's just the same formula. Roll in town, meet you know, meet the Gorons. Oh yeah, I, we have that thing, but like. But it's you know actually behind a thing and actually something but you must in town. Defeat us and defeat a strength. Yeah, something. Yes. About the thing to go do the thing I and I need that. the thing. So we do that for three episodes. And but we're gonna meet these races. Hell yeah. About like oh yeah uh, we yes but it's here do the, do the thing save us from the thing yeah. get the thing for us. So the next three episodes are those the little. Ravali fetch is his name. Ravali. Wow. Sorry, that it's just all good. hit me. So. At, at the end of episode six, after all the three things have been acquired, Link heads back to the sacred temple where the old woman is, and she's able to turn the goddess sword into the master sword. And goes, here's the thing. Ba, 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 ba. So you need to go, um, you need to go back through the temple, or, or into the time portal, and you gotta go save Zelda. Yeah. So he jumps uh oh no i'm sorry link goes so he turns the master sword, i'm sorry gets the mat turns the god sword into the master sword goes back in time talks to zelda and i was like hey here's what's really happening <sighs> demise like the the lore that we heard at the beginning of the game or the game beginning of the, the show like that was all real like there were three goddesses that set up this world but there was also an ancient evil thing called demise one of the goddesses uh, sacrificed her immortality to be and take on human form in yes. order to like to help use the Triforce that they made and seal away demise. But in doing so, she entered the mortal realm and in order to protect the Triforce and keep demise always imprisoned forever, um I it, I'm her. And I'm just gonna keep re uh, reincarnating through yeah, time. Man. So like I have to stay here to make sure this thing never gets out again and link's like just like what he's like yeah and i have to stay here link i can't go back the only way i can go back is if we get the triforce and i don't know where that is but oh, i'm shit, stuck here with doing we this duty so like i'm really sorry so link goes back to the present and tells the old woman what's going on he's like well you need to find the triforce and i think i know where it is you gotta head back to skyloft that's the end of episode six. Episode seven, Link heads back to Skyloft to figure out where the Triforce is and is directed to go to the Sky Keep because you know people start learning stuff and just trusting him. It's like, well, there's a, yeah, there's old lore that maybe there's something in the Sky Keep. He goes to the Sky Keep. Uh, Link and Fee face some challenges. You know, overcome some obstacles of like proving themselves worthy of the thing. Like maybe they fight some of those you know animated knights or whatever. Just like you know, some a cool fight scene. Yeah. So Link gets the Triforce, and so he then makes the wish. Uh, to destroy demise once and for all, and in doing so, the sky keep falls out of the sky, and who just happens to be? Cause no one really saw the surface, but the sky keep was directly over the sacred temple where everything where they were talking, and so it falls basically uh. right in front of the old woman, and so uh, it crushes the that imprisoned guy they fought earlier. Crushes him. He's like gushed, total crunch. Yep. And the day is saved. Hooray! Link and Zelda comes out of the time portal like you did it. You you totally killed uh you destroyed demise forever. Hooray! That is exactly when everyone's guard was down when Girahim, the guy from episode two, pops up and is like, You may have killed him now, but there is still a time where he's alive, which is the past, because the portal's still open, grabs Zelda, jumps back into the portal. Son of a ah! bitch! So Link follows Gary this is up now episode 8 link follows Gary Heem back into the gate and there's a huge badass fight scene uh and we through like waves of moblins and all sorts of stuff um to get to Gary Heem before he st he res uses Zelda to resurrect demise in the past gotcha link has the big ass fight with Gary Heem but the ritual is just completed enough for demise to rise absorbs Zelda and now he and also makes Gary Heem his true form which is a dark master sword. Uh. Um, so, Link and Demise fight. It's like super crazy awesome. Lots of cool stuff. Link's flying around. Like Also, Link's got only a couple of items during this mission. Yeah. Like, you know, of the, the myriad of Zelda weapons, he only got a couple. Of, he got two of them. I don't know which ones. We can fill that in later. But he got two sure. of them. He's using stuff. It's great. A bow and arrow and 
sure. maybe boomerang maybe something just you know but it's really cool eventually link's gonna win because you know he, he hit him three times in the right spot and then used the bomb or whatever <laughs> um and then link <laughs> drives the master sword into demise stopping him killing him yeah demise goes you may have stopped me but my rage will follow the both of you throughout time you will never get yeah. rid of me he builds ganondorf out of his rage exactly yeah. so the battle ends the, the cycle has been started um impa says she can't go back uh with them she has to stay here because she's a person of this time okay. and the gate's gonna close forever now sure so i gotta stay and zelda's really sorry and sad so they because they've been through a lot so they hug they head back um and it turns out that the old woman who's at the sacred temple the whole time was actually impa Oh, that's cool. And so, but then she like really dies. I like that a lot. Because her duty has now been. Yeah. Um, but they realize that they need to make sure that this gate stays closed forever, so the demise can never. No one can get back to them. So we need to close this time gate and okay. close the sacred temple to keep this whole to keep the evil trapped. And the only key for doing that is the master sword. But the thing is, in order to do this, it's going to sacrifice Fee. So. Fee and Link have a nice little emotional moment yeah. because they've been through a lot and they've become really close. And Fee's like, it's okay. I'm just a sword. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my duty and like make sure this thing is put away forever. That's so sad. I, it's, no, it's really sad because she's, yeah. she's going to sorry, be gone. Sorry, I just like went there for a second. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man. I'm really sorry, Link. I got to go. Yeah, maybe. But like, is it, this is all just Skyward Sword? Yes. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. There's a, I cut out I all mean, of the I extraneous mean, obviously, stuff. Obviously. There's so much extraneous stuff for the game stuff. Yeah. But this story, so, like, Fee sacrifices herself. Link puts the Master Sword in the pedal. And, like, the temple is sealed. The time portal is destroyed. And the day is saved. Link and Zelda uh, do not go back to Skyloft. They stay on the surface to start again. Hyrule. Yeah. And that's the end. Of that's the, great, that's bud. That's the end of the season. That's really good. Yep. I, I... I'm sorry. <clears throat> that was the end of season one. Oh. I'm sorry. Okay. Season two of The Legend of Zelda. Wind Waker. So here's the grand... I, not, I didn't write anything else. Here's the grand idea that I came up with. Okay. We're going to true detective The Legends of Zelda. Okay. Every season... New Link. New Link, new cast. Colorblind casting. It's a brand new it's we're gonna we're gonna do a TV version of the game, keeping with the same basic formula what I just did. And probably more with the later games because there's more story there. And we there's so there's more like interpersonal drama yeah. and the stuff going on between characters. Because you're setting up a cyclical like link there will always be a link Zelda and Ganon. Like there's always yes. Everything yeah. will be a little different each season. The aesthetics can be a little bit different. The cast will be different every time. Uh huh. But like, and the, but the situation's you know similar. But like, the, we get the new aesthetic. You no know, Wind Waker will be se- season two. So we're on a boat doing a thing. Like, and it's a thousands of years later. It's not just like oh the next generation. No, no. This is thousands of years later. Like we will we'll learn a little bit about the history between the first <sighs> yeah. season and this season of like. Hyrule was here for thousands of years, and then like, uh-huh. and it was great. But then the darkness came, and the only way to save everything from Ganon was to flood Hyrule. Yeah. So Wind Waker. So we don't. We're ch- we're taking huh. the timeline from the games, and we're just kind of dumbing it down a little bit, moving it, just massaging I it. I always forgot that's why there's a huge ocean. Yeah. Huh. We're just massaging the stories for a TV version. So what's after Wind Waker? Twilight Princess. Because What's at that? the end of Wind Waker, they're able to uh, seal away Ganon, but they get him out of their realm, okay. and he goes to the Twilight Realm. So it's a little, it's a little bit of there's a little threads between. Okay. So it goes Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, Ocarina of Time. Oh yeah, okay. And this is why this and Ocarina of Time has to go forth, and here's why, because at the end of Ocarina of Time, Zelda makes a mistake. She keeps she uses the triforce about after link dis, uh, traps ganon uh-huh. and they're able to trap him in the sacred realm yeah it's the only place safe you know the, the, we need it we, we needed to put him somewhere or trap him somewhere where he could be for you know a, a serious long time a serious amount of time uh-huh it was the sacred realm was the only place i could put him so yes. it mentioned like we, we sealed him into the sacred realm okay but the problem was that when after that was hap- after that happened zelda kept both child link and adult Link 
in the timeline. Zelda chooses because she can't just choose one of Link to die because one of them was going to die. Yes. Because you can't, the timeline. Okay. So she makes, she uses the, the power of the Triforce to keep both of them alive and she breaks time. Now she doesn't know this. I'm just telling you this for the meta story. So both of them are alive. Fifth and final season is a link to the past. Hell yeah. So this se- this season is going to be a little different than the other seasons because this is the final season. We start kind of the same. We get a new Link. We get a new Zelda. There's stuff going on. They realize that um, the Sacred Realm has turned into the Dark World. And it's been, you know, th- you know h- hundreds of generations between this and the last one, right? Mm. But um, once Zelda gets taken to the Dark World and Link goes after her, uh-huh. we learn that something truly horrible has happened. And this is different. I'm making this. This is this is now okay. OC stuff. Ganon used the mistake that Zelda made in the Ocarina of Time when she broke time to keep both of them alive to go back in timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly. Which one? Ganon. Uh, yeah, no, he, no, no. What, what does he go back to change? He goes back and gets all of his previous selves. Okay. Because and then we're going to have all the different links? Yep. Do you want to know what I wrote down on my phone? What did you write down on your phone? Link into the Spider Verse. <laughs> <laughs> Show it to the camera. Show it. He did. He did. He did. Called it. He did. <laughs> so using the you know, Link figures out a way using the Master Sword and yeah. and the same the same exploit Ganon figured out. Yeah. To go back and get all of our previous links from the other seasons and they all come together and and because Ganon's what Ganon's plan is is to get the tri he has you know, with all the you know it's kind of like that one of those doctor anniversaries of like the three doctors taking on three masters whatever yeah everyone's you know using their abilities Ganon wants to get the Triforce to give uh, Hylia which is the, what who Zelda is the mortal reincarnation of he Ganon wants to give her her god her godhood back Oh. To get her out of the reincarnation cycle. Gotcha. So that he can just like, well, the cycle's broken, but I'm still here. So you, there's no more Zelda and no more Link. I'm free to do whatever the hell I want because I can rule time again. That's, Ha-ha. Yeah, that's really cool. So he's trying, to, he's trying to do that. So Link uses the Master Sword and the same exploit and pulls all five, sorry, six Links together because we have child and adult from Ocarina. Yo. So... We now have, for the last couple episodes, the whole cast of previous shows working together to take on a composite Ganon slash Demise. That's crazy. But here's the thing. At the end, even with all of them working together, uh-huh. Zelda, it's not, it's not enough. Even they have a bunch of Master Swords, it's not, nothing's working. Like They're trying really hard, but like they just don't quite have enough power. Zelda is able to tap into her mistake and use her own power from previous Zeldas through the time stream because she's been able to do this because she did that in the first version of it. Yeah. Zelda's able to tap into the time force or something like, you know, the Triforce power from through time. And she's able to merge all six links into the ultimate link, which is the mask from Majora's Mask. Yeah. When you get the power yeah, and you the turn god, to- and you have the you have the infinity sword. Yep. Question. And the white tunic. Did you say steak? I did say steak cool. multiple times. Great. So ultimate, you know, Majora's Mask, ultimate link with the infinity sword, which is the combination of all six links that we've seen in the show, takes on, you know, composite Ganon, like the end of time. Like that sacred realm where you know we're between. Oh yeah. yes, 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 yes. And just big ass. This is this is the fight that the whole show has been building towards. Yeah. Because everyone in each in each season had a different a, a couple of different Zelda weapons. Sure. But now they have all, all of them. them. So it's amazing. It's so cool. It's everything you've always wanted to see in a live action Zelda show. I was like, this is. It's so cool. It's so cool. It's so cool. But it wins. It, it, Link, of course, wins with Zelda's help because she's blasting him or something, you know, giving him a power from behind. Or like all the Zelda, you can see like all the Zelda's, you know, using, you know, f- doing the Care Bear stare through time, through the 
current one yeah, into man. the up composite link. It it's so cool. Link stabs, you know, Ganon demise with the Omni Sword or whatever, and it's like, you've what have you done? You've ruined everything. This is going to, if there's no me and no you and no Zelda, what time is? You've destroyed all of time. And it's like if it destroys you, then so be it. Yeah. And the whole screen goes white. All right. And then... And then what? <laughs> a young boy wakes up in bed. And a little fairy comes down. Says, hey, Link. Listen. You gotta get up. We gotta go on an adventure. And the show ends. Oh, that's really good. And I wanted to keep it purposely because, like, A, you can go to the games and have more adventures. Did it reset? Is 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 everyone... Did it, did it just... Is the reincarnation loop still going? Or is this just a... Who's to say? Who's to say? Make your choice. Ten years in the making. Yeah. So because these seasons would be... This like this would be... Like, this is a swing. This is going to take... But like... Wow, dude. I can't believe you called it, too. I totally called it. Yeah. Oh, you just were so excited. And I was like, he's doing all the links. He's doing all the links. What's better than Except one? Except the... And I'm the... And you, the only one you didn't do is the one that I did. Yeah. <laughs> Because I knew you were doing that one, and it's like, oh, well, because I'm not I was like, but I knew I knew I was safe doing Breath of the, but also I I think the Breath of the Wild is the, the has the best world building, so that's the one sure. I'm actually interested in seeing more of. But I'd add one thing to your ending there. Sure. <laughs> Everything, yeah, it's all white, and then you see like a kid, um, <laughs> he'd be like, oh, it's time to go on an adventure, and then it just passes by the window, and you just see like in the distance, just Skull Kid with Majora's Mask just standing there, just like. <laughs> and the camera goes <laughs> <laughs> and then the moon falls and kills Dude, all of Majora's them Majora's mass effed me up so Dude, I, that I game is, truly that game is not, was so, not ready for it that game is so unintentionally scary Yeah, they didn't mean for it to be as truly horrifying as it is well done sir thank you sir I kind of got lost in the sauce there for a while but you landed the plane good job thank you Good job. Here's what sparked the whole thing. There was, I saw a small commercial for True Detective Season 3, and I was like, son of a bitch, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. True Detective. True Detective. That's a genius. Yeah. That's a genius play for a show. <gasps> we can do Aren't they Zelda. on four at this point, or is it three? I thought it was, I thought it was three. I don't know. I never watched it, but I just know you that- You never watched the first season of True Detective? Mm-hmm. I know people love it, and I know the, de- the device behind it of just, you know, different. It's a new, new cast every season. Ooh, yeah. But it's, you know, same basic, you know, yeah, it's a true detective show, but like new cast, new, new mysteries, new, new stuff. It's yeah. Like, yep. That's, that's Sledge it. Or yeah, you Final fantasy did. Hell yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I think we did it. We, dude, we totally did it. Yeah. Base is covered. Want yeah. the new one? Want the, all the old ones? Oh yeah. Covered. Got oh, it. Yeah. Got he. Whew. Don't attack the chickens. I you'll die. Dude, I cannot wait for Tears of the Kingdom cannot wait we have to go to a wedding that weekend and I'm, I'm actually mad i know <laughs> like i'm actually mad well i mean you know the best thing about the switch jay it's portable yeah i want to play it on my i want to oh man it's kind of like you know i saw i'm gonna Switch-ish. stream it though it's a whole thing i don't know a good vibe. well good i think vibe. we did yeah. it bravo hooray all right <laughs> Don't you sass me with my own logic? How dare you? How dare I, sir? All right, everybody. I dare. I think we did it. We did do it. Good job, bud. Great job. All right. Whew. We've been doing a lot of podcasting lately. We have. <laughs> I'll see you on Monday, bud. We'll see you. <laughs> Woo! What's, Woo! What's the um, next one? Oh. I don't even know. I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> well... If you guys are watching this on YouTube, uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, if you wouldn't mind liking, subscribing, and hitting that bell and doing that YouTube that you do so well. And if you're uh, listening to this wherever you catch your podcasts, if you wouldn't mind leaving us a quick review, maybe hit us with five stars. It really helps the show, and honestly, I like looking at them. They make me happy. Um, yeah, But as we end every single one of these episodes, heartbreak feels good. In a place like this. It's the slow. Hey, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That you never see coming. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.